Hello there and welcome to Drive Club VR. Well, we're not actually playing it normally, which we will very soon because I've got a PSVR order and everything like that. So if you want to, you know, watch that stuff, then subscribe and we'll, we'll do it soon. But anyway, I want to talk about Drive Club VR because I played it at Gamescom. Thank you so much to Stefan. He actually got me in from Nitro Nation. He actually managed to hook me up and get me in and to play this game because otherwise I would not have played it at all. So that man is a legend. Anyway, let's get into it. So Drive Club VR. Holy crap. It's still a thing for one. And it was actually really, really good. Now, for those that don't know, Drive Club ran at 30 frames a second. It was 1080p. It was pretty much, in my opinion, that like the best looking racing game probably that's been like ever been made, in my opinion. But anyway, they dumbed it down a little bit for PSVR, as you can imagine. They dumbed it down to make it w work on the headset and obviously run at 60 frames. If a thing does not run at 90 frames a second, I think it is, for VR, you will get motion sick badly. badly. You will... You just want to you, you want to kill yourself basically you'll you want to kill yourself So they've actually managed to pull it off pretty damn well It runs a 60 and then the VR, PSVR bumps up to 90. That's what it can do It's the same with uh, you obviously get the same with the place uh, the vibe and that sort of thing If you run games at 45 frames a second It does some kind of technique to double that and the frame rate seems pretty damn buttery smooth but it works pretty damn well. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things I want to talk about the PSVR itself. It actually felt really, really comfortable. Uh, the Oculus Rift really doesn't... It's probably the least comfortable. I would say the PSVR is more comfortable than that, but not as comfortable as the Vive. Except for the fact it's a lot, lot lighter. And again, it's obviously like half the price as well. But you do need a PS4. But you do need a supercomputer super to run the Vive pretty well. But anyway, the actual headset itself works pretty damn well and obviously you use different headphones so i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna use my sennheiser so it just it's just perfect i love it but yeah definitely feels really really solid but actually to the actual game is it any different to the normal drive club it felt obviously a lot different that you have the information on the little screen that kind of tells you how you're doing you won't be able to see a lot of it in my gameplay because uh, i obviously couldn't capture the screen so i'm gonna have a bit of the ps access video in here where they actually have uh, the actual gameplay and then we're going to switch to normal drive club because there isn't, honestly, visually, there isn't much difference between the normal game and the drive club VR game. You see, the difference is it has been dumbed down. The normal game runs at 1080p. It's basically like bumping it down on PC when you've got a 1080p panel to 720p, probably less than that. But it's, it's bumped down to, say, let's say 600p. It still is and uh, bumped down. And then it, it runs at a higher frame rate, and that's pretty much it. There's a lot more jaggies everywhere, but that's the case on most consoles anyway. And when you're actually playing, you don't really notice them. Because you're obviously focusing on, well, the VR. It's just freaking amazing. You, I'm, I'm one that notices jaggy, jaggies a lot in games, or uh, anti, uh, a, sorry, aliasing, should I say. But with the PSVR, you kind of, and like the Vive and stuff, you never really notice that. Now, again, you can definitely tell that the PSVR has a lower quality screen than the Vive. I believe that's the case. If not, it felt like that anyway. But uh, it, it was still pretty damn good. We haven't got, like, the Vive isn't incredible. The, the actual quality of it is the best. But it's still also got, uh, it doesn't look incredible. It doesn't look as good as actually, like, having a full-on panel that's running in max settings. Obviously, it's not going to look like that. It's, uh, I think it's just, like, 1080p. And when you're that close to the screen, it's really not great. So... 4K is probably when we're going to start to see the uh, the headsets uh, work very well. We could probably do that now, but obviously you're going to need a massively freaking crazy PC to be able to do it. And you can only run on single cards right now, so it's not possible. This video is turning into basically talking about everything VR. But anyway, how did the game feel? How did it play differently to the base game? Obviously, you got uh, it's adapted to the headset. So in the cockpit view, you obviously can look, look, look at the screens, that sort of thing. You can actually move around the cockpit view. I didn't actually try standing up. I wish I did. Like in Project Cards, you can stand up and look around, which is actually really fun. Um, one thing is in replay mode, you can actually sit in the passenger seat and see the AI, like you, driving the car, I believe. So that would be really cool. You just go like a hot lap uh, in the passenger seat of the car, which is really awesome. I tried the uh, the Huayra, the Pagani because uh, that was the fastest vehicle there that was available to me. The others were like the FF and something else, I can't I remember. But I, I, tro I chose that and I actually asked specifically for them to put manual on. And they were like, they were teach there was, the guy was telling me all the blue controls on the wheels, like, mate, I, I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I just asked you to put it in manual. It's like, you, are you sure you know what to do? I know how to do it. It's put it, put it on manual. You're not. 
So anyway, I put it on manual, definitely improved the experience. It definitely feels like Drive Club. Definitely feels like Drive Club. But it does feel easier. It was a whole damn lot easier. Now, I can't specifically say that they have changed it, but it felt like they had massively. I don't know, again, because as I was explaining in my, pro pro my Project Cars VR video, the game, you get more senses back. When you do something in the game, uh, for example, your head knows how the car's gonna move now because it, obviously it's just like, it becomes natural to you almost. Like when you actually start driving your own car, everything becomes more natural to you. Because you've got an extra sense of the fact that you're actually in that, you're moving around, it's perfect. It's, it's, honestly, it's it, it just, you have more input into your brain to figure out what's going on kind of thing. Uh, but the cars felt as if they were much more, uh, they were much easier to handle. I don't know if they have changed the handling model. Honestly, if they have, I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm hoping the hardcore handling models there, that sort of thing. But again, I can't 100% confirm that is the case, but it felt like it handled a lot easier and it was a lot easier to, you know, correct things, that sort of thing in the actual game. Now, how was the actual motion sickness value in the game? So I actually played two games. I played Super Stardust game, which was not actual Super Stardust in any way, other than the fact that you're in a ship and you're shooting things, you know. It, it's twin stick shooter. It's Super Stardust. You need twin stick shooter. You're fucking moving around the ship like No Man's Sky, just flying around shooting things. It, was, it wasn't very good. But it, I'm probably going to get it anyway, because I'm, <laughs> I'm a sucker for that type of game. Anyway, so I was playing that, and I did actually feel towards the end a little bit motion sick. Whereas Drive Club, I didn't. You wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think that would be the, the way around it was, but I wouldn't, you know, you would normally think that obviously you would get sick from playing a racing game that's very fast motion, everything's going very, very quickly. But I actually got less, I didn't get emotion sick at all from Drive Club, whereas I did a little bit from uh, Super Stardust. But it actually, it's, it's pretty awesome, honestly. The PSVR is a piece of awesome kit, honestly. Um, I, as I said, I expected it to be worse than the Vive. I went in expecting it to be worse than the Vive. But it actually, I actually came out saying, you know what? This is actually pretty damn close. And it's, for the cost, it's insane. But one thing, Sony, why can't I buy a damn camera? Where can I buy? <laughs> let me buy a camera, please. Like, literally. Where, where can I buy? I go on Amazon. I can't buy a camera. You need a camera to work this thing. I can't buy a camera. Mate, to be honest, I didn't actually see a camera. But I just kind of sat in a seat and... Yeah, but again, massive thank you to Stefan for actually getting me uh, the chance to be able to do this. And I'm hoping, obviously, it actually... I, I, I'm definitely going to be playing. This is my number one Vive game so far. Easily. Easily. It's the only game that I'm actually going to bother really playing quite a bit of. It's, it's giving me another reason to set up my wheel rig and that sort of thing that I'm definitely going to do. And you already know I'm going to make millions of bloody videos on Drive Club. I had so much fun with Drive Club. And I am... A massive advocate for VR, not just in games, but also in the fact that VR in the future, my friends, is going to be in your schools and everything. And Drive Club VR is going to help that. <laughs> it's going to teach you how to drive a car in school. No, it's not going to do that. But really, really fun. Obviously, you're using the, uh, the Thrustmaster T300 RS wheel, which I already knew how to use. It just it's, it definitely improves that. Again, obviously, if you're going to play a racing game with, uh, with with the VR headset, I would recommend using a wheel. I would recommend getting a wheel set up. I know it makes it even more expensive because obviously you've got the console. Hopefully, most of you will have the console already. If you don't, that's about 350 quid. Then the headset's going to be 400, and the camera's going to be about 50, I believe. I'm not too sure because the price isn't listed anywhere because I can't bloody buy it. And then you got your wheel rig, which, to be honest, Thrustmaster has a pretty awesome... Uh, I think it's called the... Uh, the T150 or something like that. It's very cheap. It's very cheap, but it actually has the proper force feedback from the higher and first master wheels, which is what you want. If you get a wheel without force feedback, you're definitely taking away from your experience. So if you're going to go full out with your VR set, you're going to end up spending pretty much the cost of a decent PC that's going to run everything. So it's your choice, really. But again, if you wanted to get VR, then obviously you go with that. Because most of you will have the PlayStation, some will have the camera, some will have the wheels already. If you just need to get the headset and camera, mate, it would definitely improve your game. It definitely, like, I only just the kind of the cars a lot more, and it was just generally a lot more fun to play. You can actually also change the view a little bit and put it into third person, which, <laughs> again, is a little bit trippy. It always feels a little bit weird, like you're flying through the sky in a bloody car. But again, it's the, op the options there, so that's very, very good. And one of the things as well uh, for the hands on the wheel, I think you only see the gloves, which sometimes throws me off a little bit. I wish you could see the hands because the hand movements in Drive Club are fucking amazing. Like the way they flip the wheel around and everything. I really, really like that. So I'm hoping they add the option 
to actually see your arms and hands in the game. That would be beautiful. Obviously, everything from the original Dragon Ball hopefully will be in there. But the game is still beautiful. It's stunning. I can't wait to see what it's like in the weather. Obviously, when I'm going ham on this game when it comes out, you already know. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go crazy with it. Anyway, be sure to let me know down in the comments what you think of this. This was definitely my VR game of the show. It was beautiful. And, uh, well, be sure to leave a like if you want to see more Drive Club. Subscribe if you are new. If you want to hear more about anything, PlayStation VR and, obviously, Drive Club and Forza and everything. Racing games. Racing. Subscribe. Until next time, guys. I'll see you soon. Peace.